Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Columbus, Ohio by Chris McAllister. How are you doing, Chris? Doing well, John. Glad to be here with you today. Yeah, and Chris is the sounder of SightShift. He is an author and speaker, author of uh, many books, actually. The Stuff Book Figure that, that Shift Out, Leader's Prayer Book, Spark Eyes the Book, um, and obviously a, a speaker and particularly on leadership. And that's what we want to focus on today. And one of the things that you talk about, Chris, is this concept of the seasons of leadership. And that is one that I found particularly, you know, fascinating because when you're in leadership positions, you tend to be so consumed by being in that position that, you know, the evolution of that sometimes maybe passes you by without you even noticing. Yeah, all the time. I mean, what happens is we get into a mode and our head gets down and we're missing like the bigger picture. So all I'm trying to do with, with this model, if you will, is draw our attention to something that is in nature. It's very natural to grab a hold of. It's intuitive. And it allows you to perceive where you are and what to do next. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out how do you figure out where you are in in the in the seasons and how or how do you even notice that you're that there's a transition happening? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So I'll do a micro and a macro example. Yeah. And, and we can blow them out and go as big as you want with them. So let's take a macro example. You're a sales professional, you're a seasoned leader, and you're starting to feel a little bit of dread. Like the day feels monotonous. It feels like I'm kind of getting sick of this work or sick of this team, that drift that starts to occur. The micro could be um, you are wanting to establish, establish yourself in a competent way as a sales leader and you're trying to adopt a new CRM, right? Mm -hmm. sure. And and you're trying to get that new habit in. So what you're wanting to pay attention to is how the process works. And the process, whether it's the macro or the micro, always begins with this, accepting what is. Just mm -hmm. accepting what is. Now, we think about that like the fall season. So we use this as a model, thinking about it as a tree. And if John, if you just think of yourself as a tree, if I think of myself as a tree, all change starts with the leaves are falling off the tree. The tree, in a sense, we could say metaphorically, is letting go of the leaves. Right. And what we're doing so often is what? Trying to tie the leaves back on. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And and if we can just accept reality, whatever it is, however uncomfortable, how much it might bother us, how much it might cause us stress, that's where we want to begin. Yeah, and it, and it it is a great analogy, like trying to stick the leaves back on the tree, because yeah, we're 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 it, innately we're very good at trying to pretend that things aren't as they are, or yeah. trying to sort of go, oh, well, this is just temporary. There's only a few leaves are going to fall off, and then you go, oops, they've all gone. Uh, so so part of it is is that is that recognition, and and I think to your point is like, am I am I just having a bad day? Am I having a bad week? Am I just Am I not that interested anymore? Is there something more fundamental going on? How do you figure out what is a fundamental change as opposed to just, you know, the normal run of things? Yeah, super great question. I mean, obviously, yeah, you have these normal things of just having the off day. Yep. Blood sugar could be out of balance, all that. Well, that's why you go to the next step, which is the winter season. And we start to think like, oh, now that I've accepted this reality that I wish wasn't true, I, I'm not going to, this is in my life. There's just so many dumb ways I've led. I'm not going to be dumb anymore. This is going to start to turn around. It's going to get better. But the reality is the problem usually gets worse before it gets better because we're starting to like pull at that thread, right? And it's going to unravel. It's like pulling in that sweater. Mm -hmm. And that unraveling is something we resist. So if it's a micro problem, like adopting a CRM or a macro problem, like what's next in my career, the, the bigness of the problem kind of determines how long we're going to be in the winter season. And so we have to sit with it. And if we sit with it and, you know, a few days has passed and we're in a different mood, that's a clue and a signal. But if there is a lingering sense of mm -hmm. dread or anger or bitterness, and we have this, we, we call it a validation check, then we're going to start leading our sales career for our own validation, not the impact we can have. And you know, when you're showing up to get something from the customer or the client more than you're giving them something, you're in a rotten mindset. And that's 
that's the how of recognizing I got a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. And then it's fascinating what you say there is like how big the problem is, how long you're going to spend it in winter and let's face in, in the winter season. And let's face it, we live in a weird world today where we try to, everything is set up for us to avoid those kind of voyages of discovery, those voyages of self-awareness, really digging deep because we have the distractions, you know, we can have like our sports results or something come flying up or I can just tune into, you know, YouTube shorts or something and just lose myself for a while. So I think it's becoming even more challenging for people to, to actually take the time out to really understand where they are. Yeah, there's endless ways, so well said, for us to avoid mm -hmm. the question of the winter season. And, you know, that is going to be always a part of reality. More sure. people are going to numb out from the pain than actually lean into it. It makes me think of a time that I was going river canoeing with a friend of mine, and um, and it was actually on whitewater rapids. So, right. no kidding, they had classifiable rapids that you could do in a canoe. This was crazy. And every rapid we came to, we would flip. So we get to the end of the day, we just rolled down a river, my knees busted up mm -hmm. and the outfitter looked at the boat and looked at us. I think he felt bad for us. And we had booked two days and he said, let me show you something tomorrow. That's going to give you the best day you've ever had on the river. Right. And he put his body in the boat and he said, every time you're coming to those rocks, you're pulling back. I want you to put your face into those rocks and mm -hmm. lean into them. You won't hit them and you'll shoot through the rapids. The next day, me and my buddy, we had the best day we've ever had on the river because we would yell at each other, John, lean in, lean in, mm. because our instinct was to pull back from the rock, tip the, the edge of the boat towards the flowing surface of the water we'd flip. That next day, we shot through them all just like a pinball. So what's happening is people are staying in prolonged ways in their winter season because they're numbing out with distractions rather than leaning in to those hard questions that they're trying to avoid. Yeah, no, that was, and, and that's such a great, uh, great story, great analogy too, because yeah, it's, um, it's, it's so kind of counter to, uh, as you said, it's counter to our nature, uh, you know, to lean into the difficulty, it's much more to, to, um, to avoid it. So once you, once you are able to lean into it and, and say, embrace and say, okay, I'm in a winter season, it's maybe a bit colder and harsher than I would like it to be, but now I need to start building for the spring. Right on. The spring just is a signal to us that there's new buds of growth. There's new insights. If it's a small problem and we had a short winter season, we know the effective action we need to take. If it's, it was a big winter, then we know the big action we need to take. And you can always tell someone has passed the test of the winter season is they're showing up to their spring season with effective action where they are impacting themselves and others. You can tell they've failed the winter test and stayed numbing out when they're showing up for their own validation. Mm -hmm. And we all know what it's like to interact with, you know, someone in leadership or sales leadership who is doing it for their own validation, not impact. Yeah. And, and no, to your, to your point. And, and I, I think that's a really critical one because I don't think people always recognize that they're, that they're craving this validation and that it's very obvious to, other people, maybe not even immediately obvious, but it, it, it becomes obvious very, very quickly. I don't think sometimes people notice how much need they have for external validation or have even like even confronted that or even considered that as an issue. Yeah, th this is so pervasive. This is like we actually built a measurement tool for it. It's mm -hmm. proprietary, unique for us, and it measures how are you showing up for your own validation because if you don't know, this is so hard to see in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you see a piece of lettuce on someone's tooth at dinner, and then you go into the bathroom and look in the mirror, and you have a piece of steak with a whole quesadilla <laughs> attached to it, right? We all have our own insecurities and in, in in ways we lead for validation. So we built a measurement tool because we would measure a team, and, and we'd be with the executive team and, and going through the results with the CEO, and the CEO would go, oh, yeah. You have just totally described Bill. That's who Bill is. But my results, that's not me. <laughs> and the executive team is like, that totally is you. Yeah. So very hard to see in the mirror. Yeah, I mean, I think the hardest thing for people is that whole self-awareness journey. It's not a it's it's something that is so I mean, I think lack of self-awareness is the thing that holds most people back from being the best version of themselves. 
but it's not an easy thing to achieve. I mean, I say I'm I'm still working on self awareness at at my stage of life. I wish I'd have gotten there a lot earlier, <laughs> but it is. But it is that because it's not it, to to be self aware is not an easy thing because it does mean that we have to actually confront some things that maybe we're not that comfortable about, and maybe yeah. those things that we're not comfortable about they may have roots, deep roots. Yeah, absolutely. We don't we don't ever master. Uh, the journey on this. We just keep coming back to the center of it. We keep mm -hmm. coming. Maturity is just coming back to those roots that are healthy. And what the winter season is doing is rooting out the mindset rot in us so we can take this effective action, which is going to take us to the summer, which is what we want. We can relax and play, but we have to relax and play with vigilance because another change is going to come. Fall season is going to come back around. So the process isn't I have to reach a point where I no longer have to adapt. The yep. process is how quickly can I come back into whatever season I'm in and not fight against it? Mm -hmm. And that's the mistake people make all the time. They try to treat all of their life like it's just in one season and it's whatever their favorite season is. And mm -hmm. they don't understand their relationship with their spouse or their kids could be in a season. Their relationship with their business could be in a season. Parts of their business could be in different seasons. And this keeps us from oversimplifying things and being overly reductionistic to be a, a wise, sophisticated leader. What does this moment need? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to, to your point is like, we are, you know, sometimes we we have this innate thing as humans where like everything is always in flux and changing and all that. But we f we feel like it shouldn't be that we should be able to sort of say, OK, everything is going to remain like this for an extended period of time. Right. And that's never and, and, and that's never the reality. But but I think a lot of times we fight with ourselves because we're trying to control things as opposed to if you like manage them. Absolutely. I, I hear it from business owners all the time. I thought I would be able to coast by now. Mm. And because of that, what that does for them is they then start hyper controlling things and they're showing up too big. They're, they're overreacting or they're avoiding, they're underreacting. They're showing up too small. And it's all because this idea that somewhere along the way they bought into from the cover of a business magazine, some false story of this person figured it out and now they have it all together. And mm -hmm. from our work with Fortune 100 to small businesses, we know no one has it all together. Everybody's learning. Yeah, I, that's, a, that's a great point. And that's a great point because we often do see people who jump from, oh, well, Chris did it this way. Therefore, if I just do it that way, everything will be cool. So he's got to figure it out. Then I'll figure that out. And I'll, instead of, as you said, instead of going, nobody has it totally figured out. And Chris's circumstances are Chris's circumstances, right? So they're not mine. Uh, therefore, uh, I, I think you're right. I think often when there's a crisis, you know, maybe, maybe sales have dipped or whatever. But when there's a crisis is, you know, leaders tend to show up often too big as you say it's too big it's 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 yes there there's an issue that needs to be addressed but it needs to be addressed in a in a in a practical and rational way as opposed to just like you know running around and making lots of noise and increasing activities everywhere because that just that just gets people more and more i think um overwhelmed if you like absolutely absolutely that's why what we do with the seasons model is we say this is customized wisdom for you. It's mm -hmm. not an answer you can copy paste. It's something that you're trying to figure out for where you are and what you need to do so that you're not overreacting or underreacting. Mm -hmm. And frankly, societies used to give leaders ways of going through what we call identity shifts so they could learn to really tap into their own upgraded healthy intuition. But now we're just so divorced from that and we don't know who we are. So we lack being able to access our own creative skills, competencies, and breakthroughs. And the passion for us is if we can help a leader learn to make these shifts, then they get to see the vision come true. They get to go where they wanted to go and enjoy getting there. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that idea of what you just said there about healthy intuition as well, because again, I mean, you can see when leaders start to lose confidence, even in their own instincts or, or their own intuition, and they start looking, always looking externally, as we said. Uh, but that idea, talk to me a little bit more about that high idea of healthy intuition, because I think that's a really key and overlooked piece. 
Yeah. Well, if you look at the four stages of learning, and I think this is one of the most brilliant psychological concepts uh, that they found was learning starts with unconscious incompetence mm -hmm. going to conscious incompetence. And so at that stage, your intuition is wrong. And it's like what happens under pressure or stress, the insecurities, the doubts you have about who you are cause you to almost either overthink and you stay too long, you hesitate, or you rush, you make a false move. When you're in that space of an upgraded intuition, the conscious competence and the unconscious competence, it has a truth to it, a center to it, a gravity to it. The way that we talk about it is it's like in your mind. And, and I just tell people, just try this out. Mm -hmm. Where all the insecurity is, what, do they like me? Am I doing a good job? Just try to get to the space behind that. Not where you're reactive going, who cares what they think, but really right behind that where it's almost like a, not a childishness, but a childlikeness where you go, who am I and what do I really want? That's the space where we find our upgraded intuition will be our best guide. Yeah, and 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 I again I think that's a fascinating point that you raised there because I also think that far from thinking that as we get older, maybe as we develop in our careers and our personal lives, that somehow innately we become more wise and more grounded and we understand where we're going and all of that. Whereas that's not really true for an, for an awful lot of people. It's because if you ask other people exactly why, why, what are you doing and why are you doing it? Where are you going with this? Like, where's your life going? Most of them will probably say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just working to support my family. And that's about it. That's about as far as they might have taken that thought. Yeah. Well, and this is why I fast forward just a little bit from that. And they mm. become more curmudgeon -y than curious. Right. And all we're trying to do is say, if you can become 51% curious, even if you're 49% curmudgeon and that's okay, you're going to move into these levels of adulthood, the elder statesman, wherever you find yourself, these later stages, and really have a lasting impact. And, and I think that's the meaning that people want. They want to be able to show up, perform well, take care of their families, be effective. But why is it that the sales leaders we talk to reach a place where they get as much joy training other sales leaders as they do from hitting their numbers because they're seeking to have an impact. Mm. The challenge is this. They cannot mentor sales leaders and make them in their image. They have to help those sales leaders find out the best way, the best version of themselves who they can become. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a, that's a great point there because uh, when it comes to coaching and mentoring, most people have no idea what that means or how to do that effectively. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, their fault. I mean, most people's last experience of coaching was somebody shouting from the sideline, you know, when they were in high school and telling them, do this, do that. Yeah. Or if you just execute this exactly, yeah. And that's what they think. And they think, well, okay, if I'm coaching somebody, hey, Chris, just this is what I would do. You just do that and everything would be, everything would be cool. Whereas we know that that's not what coaching is. So I think there is a real gap there on coach and people understanding how to coach a mentor. Yeah, well, and so that's why we, where we kind of began this, this season's model, yeah. it's a way for you to learn to coach yourself. Now, obviously we do coaching. We know healthy coaching accelerates insights at the same time, you know, and I think people get shocked when I say this, like you have what you need in you. A coach can help you get there quicker, mm -hmm. but you have what you need in you and, and use what we've talked about today, this season's model to ask yourself this question, where am I? Where am I? And that is one of the three most powerful questions you can ask yourself. Yeah, no, I love that. That's, that's, that's fantastic. And as I said, I mean, I think, uh, I think asking that question alone would promote prompt a lot of introspection because it's a very, it's a very loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> It, it has so much to it. That's, that's aware on your part to even know that because for a lot of us, you know, to accept that reality and be honest. I mean, it's the classical story about the man who doesn't want to stop and ask for directions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, then he yeah. has to admit he's lost. Exactly. Or you could go down the country in, in Ireland and you could ask for directions, you know, and they'll give you the great, they'll say, yeah, it's uh, about two miles up the road and you turn left where the old schoolhouse used to be. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, listen, Chris, this has been fantastic. All of Chris's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and SightShift. Yeah, thank you. For those company owners and leaders who have a three to five year horizon and they need better and more leaders to get there, we help them do that in four hours a month or less so that they can really scale their company because their people are now scalable. And we install a leadership operating system and they can find out more at SIGHTSiteshift.com. Yeah, and I would highly encourage people to go there. This is such a such a critical area and everything that Chris has talked about today, you just scratch the surface, um, obviously goes a lot deeper. And I think it, it would be a great, great investment of your time to go and check it out. So thanks again, Chris. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon.